Good morning, everyone. My name is Sina Patora, Dr. Diana Prevan of Jesus' Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. I am welcoming today all of the national and all of the international fellowship members and visitors around the globe as you receive the spiritual nutrition of the Lord's Word today. Amen. Today's sermon is called the house of bread from heaven. The house of bread from heaven. Bethlehem. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, today's scripture focus is Luke chapter 2, verses 4 to 7. Luke chapter 2, verses 4 to 7. Amen. Please today have all of your highlighters. Get your word out. Get this script out that I share with everyone every week. Amen. Of the word of God so you could follow along. As your very own pastora, Dr. Diana Bravan, shares with you the living word. Amen. Today's scripture that I just shared of focus is Luke chapter 2, verses 4 to 7. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him into that manger because there was no room for him in the inn. Amen. Luke chapter 2, verse 12. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped up in swaddling clothes, lying in that manger. Amen. The Hebrew town named Bethlehem, folks. This literally means the house of bread. What is the name Bethlehem in Hebrew? It means the house of bread. This little town, it housed the true bread of life. For all mankind. Amen. Jesus was laid in a manger. Where he was born. A manger is a crib or a stall. Amen. As it shares in Luke chapter 13 verse 15. Please note the scriptures folks. It's from a Greek word that means to eat. Amen. It's that from which animals ate at the stalls. The angel, it said that it was, would be a sign to the shepherds. Amen. In Luke chapter 2, 12. In other words, the baby laying in the actual manger would be signs. Amen. Signs, it teaches us a lesson. The term sign used by an angel, it literally means a token, a symbol of something spiritually understood. Amen. What was the sign? What was the sign? What was the lesson? What is indicated by Jesus being laid in a place where food was laid to be eaten? Amen. It's a picture of Jesus as the food to be eaten. Amen. A manger is where food is put for feeding. Amen. He is the bread of life, folks. He is the bread of life. He is the manna from heaven. Laid in a feeding thorough. Amen. And Bethlehem means house of bread. The Greek word for manger, it speaks of, of, of the thought 
of to eat. The sign is, is then made very clear within our hearts. Amen, folks? Here is he who we must eat. But what does that mean, folks? Christ came into this world to be food for humanity. In what way? In what way? Let us look to the Bible here. In John chapter 6, verse 33. Let me read this and share this with you right now. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from the heavens and giveth life unto the world. Here we read that the bread of heaven is he. Jesus is the bread. And this bread is to give life to the entire world. Let's go back and catch the context of this statement in John chapter 6. Jesus spoke of how people followed him in order to obtain more of the bread that he miraculously multiplied. John chapter 6 26 to 29 Jesus answered them and said verily verily I say unto you ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled labor not for the meat which perisheth for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life which is the son of man shall give unto you for him hath God the father sealed then said they unto him what shall we do that we might work the works of God Jesus had answered and said unto them this is the work of God that ye believe on him who he has sent he said that they should go after some food. But there's better food than what they were particularly after. There's a work and a laborer that they should rather exert. Instead of laboring for bread that perishes. He told me then. Them when asked. That this labor is believing. The labor of believing. If they would believe. Then they would obtain food and meat. That brings one to experience eternal life. Amen folks. John chapter 6. Verse 30 to 31. John chapter 6. Verses 30 to 31. Come on, folks, let us read. They said, therefore, unto him, What sign showest thou, then that we may see and believe thee? What dost th thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat, folks. Then they continued to discuss eating. And food spoke of manna. When they asked him to show them a sign in order for them to believe his words. Amen. They said that their fathers ate manna in the wilderness. That was actually bread from heaven. It was actually bread from heaven. Hallelujah, folks. John chapter 6, 32 to 33. I pray that everyone is highlighting this on your scripts or in your word right now. Amen. Writing down your notes. But John chapter 6, 32 to 33. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moises gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven 
and giveth life unto the world. He giveth life unto all the world. Jesus said that the bread that they did eat was not given by Moises. He seemed to say this because they always compared him to Moises. God did the giving of the manna, folks. And the same God also gives the true bread. Jesus is not to be compared to Moises, but to the manna that God gave. Jesus' reference to, to true bread. What is Jesus' reference to true bread? It implies that the bread of manna that their fathers ate was simply a representation of something original. And then the true. Your fathers only got a shadow of the real thing. I am the real thing. Verse 33 says what the real bread is. It is he that came down from heaven. It is he who gives life to the world, folks. John chapter 6, 34. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Then they asked him to always give them this bread. It sounds like the cries from the woman at the well. John 4, 15. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus told the people that the bread is right there before them. They asked for it, but it was right there in front of them. In other words, go ahead and eat. I am that bread. But he told them that they did not believe. There's no way for them to eat. And if they do not even believe in him, the only way is through faith. It was right there in front of them, but they were not eating. The manna, it was to sustain Israel on their way from Egypt towards the Canaan. Jesus is the true manna. And the goal that God has for us is to eat this bread, this truth, and get it into us until we come to a place where God wants us to be in. Where we manifest Christ to the world. We need to come to this fullness of Christ, folks. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 13. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come into the unity of our faith, of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen. These ministers feed us. And we thereby grow up to come to the fullness of the stature of Christ. Folks, he came to this world first and foremost as the bread of heaven we would partake of him eat of him feed from him jesus said that he is the manna he said that he is the true manna and then he became more specific in his words to the people in John chapter 6, 53, then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, ye have no life in you. 
he said that they must eat his flesh and they must drink his blood. And the peak reference that the blood and the flesh, it refers to the Last Supper references made to the breaking of his body as bread and the shedding of his blood as wine. Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 to 28. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the brand new testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. It refers to the death of Jesus on the cross, folks. We find that Jesus was provided to the world as bread and as wine. He would die on the cross and provide the bread and the wine. That feeding on the body of Christ is what brings us eternal life. Folks, this is what brings us eternal life. You might say this sounds more like an Easter message today than one for this time of this year, of this season of the Lord's birth. However, Bethlehem means house of bread and he is the bread of heaven that was laid in a feeding thorough and the only reference to feeding on him folks is giving regarding the cross so everything points to the cross everything even his birth at first corinthians 10 we read at 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 to 4. Moreover, brethren, I would not even, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the seas and were all baptized unto Moises in the clouds and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. Amen. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ Jesus. And then in the very next chapter, we read, folks, in 1 Corinthians 11. 19 to 21 it reads for there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you heresies or sex then when ye come together therefore into one place this is not to eat the lord's supper for in eating everyone taketh before other his own supper. And one is hungry and the other is drunken. 1 Corinthians 11, 23-26 Let us read. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he has taken the bread. When he had given thanks, he had break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner, folks, also he taken the cup. And when he had sucked, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. 
this do ye as often as ye eat it and as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and as often as ye drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death until he comes. He speaks of the food and of the drink of the Exodus, folks. And then he speaks of the bread and the wine of his body and the blood in communion. We require this bread and wine in order to get to the place where God wants us to be. Many amongst Israel, they did not even get to the place where God wanted them. He wanted them to be a nation where God is glorified. They had the food and the drink, but they didn't even get to where the food and drink was provided for them to live and to reach. Amen. John chapter 6, 66 states, From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. When Jesus told them about this in John chapter 6, folks, it says that many walked no more with him. So many do want to get into that real concentration points. Amen. To which God is pointing. They want miracles or blessings. Like these people wanted the supernatural alone. They don't want the true bread of what God is stressing in the word. They want to play around and, and not feast on the true meat and on the true drink. They will never even get to the place where God wants them. John chapter 6, 66 is another picture of people who do not arrive at the place that God wants them to reach. Just like Israel of old. Although he made provisions for them to reach, to reach it, by the way, of the spiritual food and drink. But God concerned that we come to a place in spirit where we're in Canaan land, folks. In Canaan land where we come into the fullness of Christ. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 10 says that the Hebrews ate and drank, but their lives it wound up in a tragedy. Why? Because they lived lives that were sinful afterwards. And then at 1 Corinthians 11, it states that the church was eating and drinking too. But were living lives that were sinful. And they were forming divisions, not conductive to what the partaking of the one body of Christ was all about. They ate and they drank as a form of simply having supper. And they lost all concepts of the body of Christ that was being portrayed to them, of which they were all a part of. They missed the entire point of the supper, folks. They could not even discern the Lord's body in all of this. They missed the all-important message in it all. The body was broken for them as they all ate bread that was broken, folks. They were dividing from one another. They were losing love for one another. And the note about the body which was broken for them, it connects with 2 Corinthians chapter 5 where we read that Christ died for us. Which means that we are all therefore dead. We share the single death of Christ Jesus, folks. That's what the eating of the bread represents. We read about, we read about the, the cross in the Psalms. Amen. Amen. Psalms 22 verse 1. Let us read. 
My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the wounds of my roaring? This occurred as Christ Jesus hung on the cross. And this is the event that Jesus said would provide the bread and the wine, flesh and the blood. That would give eternal life, folks. Oh, that would give us eternal life. The cross. His death accomplished as our deaths. And when we read down this psalm, we find these words circling all around his crucifixion. And then we see, we see reference to the Exodus. Psalms chapter 22, verse 4 to 5. Psalms chapter 22, verse 4 to 5. <coughs> Come on, folks, let us read. Our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. Let's go into Psalms 22, 7 to 8. All that they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head saying he trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him. Seeing that he delighted in him. Mark chapter 15 verses 30 to 32. Mark chapter 15 verses 30 to 32. Save thyself and come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking said. Among themselves with the scribes he saved others. Himself he cannot save. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. Reviled him. Psalms chapter 22, verse 16. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Psalms chapter 22 verse 18. Let us go along here. Amen. They part my garments among them. I cast lots upon my vesture. Also, please read uh, Matthew chapter 27, 35. Please write that down in your memo right now, folks, as we go along. We are going into right now Psalms chapter 22, verses 26 to 27. Psalms chapter uh, 22, verses 26 to 27. Amen. Uh, excuse me, my pages here are, are sticking. Glory to God. Um, the meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seeks him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. Notice that the meek would eat and be satisfied, folks. Notice that the meek. Amen. Notice that the meek would eat and be satisfied. That is eating and not being hungry any longer. Hunger speaks of a lack. You lack that which strengthens you. Amen? We need not to lack anything. Why would it speak of eating after speaking of the cross of Christ? Why? Because it refers to the same thing that Jesus referred to the night 
before his crucifixion. When he took the bread and he broke it, indicating his, indicating his broken body for them and the wine representing his shed blood for them. There's nothing else for the world except to remember what happened long ago. And then nothing different is going to happen that man might be saved than what already happened, folks. Nothing other than what happened long ago will take people to glory. It will take us to glory. So everyone must look back to the cross. Remember, it will satisfy you. To many of you who always needs prayer or for continued prayer, I would always remind you to look towards the cross out of your eyes. To focus on Jesus Christ. Amen. You will hunger no more. Neither will you thirst anymore, folks. And the very next solemn, it reads the same way as, as follows. Psalms 23 verses 1 to 3. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Never hunger nor thirst. How? Because he maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake, folks. The shepherd leads me besides the still waters. I shall not want. I shall not lack. I receive the food and the drink. The still waters and green pastures. The food and the drink. He is the shepherd who leads me to the food and the drink. He is the lamb who provides the food and the drink. Both the flesh and the food. The way that God restores our souls is to take us back to the cross and help us comprehend one more time what happened to us when Christ died folks what happened to us our old lives died and we were raised with him folks what happened our old lives died and we were raised with him we are one with Christ Amen. Do you need restoration and some strength? Go to the food of life and drink of life. Go. Go to the food of life and the drink of life, folks. Amen. We got plenty to offer you every day here. Amen. All of this is written immediately after Psalms 22. Amen. It's the next psalm here. After the cross of Psalms 22 verse 1. We read of the leading of the shepherd. We sheep to the feeding grounds and the waters. We are the sheep being led to eat and drink. When Jesus referred to eating and drinking, he referred to his blood and the flesh. And that was his death, with which was to identify the aspect of eating and drinking. It refers to our identification with Christ's death, where his broken body and shed blood provides a picture of a spiritual bread and wine. And then eating and drinking his flesh and blood, it represents living from the truth which we have believed that concerns his death as us, as us. Realizing that we receive resurrection and eternal life when we believed his death was our death that freed us from the backslidden race of Adam. Oh, it is so important to understand that we died with him, folks. 
as a Christian, it is very, very important to understand that we have died with him. That's the entire basis of salvation from sin, folks. Why is it that we see Jesus as food in an animal feeding thorough? Why is it? Our shepherd, our shepherd leads us to food and drink as though we were sheep. Amen. And sheep identifies with the lamb of God's sacrifice as lambs were slain in Egypt to free Israel from the slavery of the Pharaoh. Amen. As lamb's death can identify with the other lamb. We are led like sheep to the meat and drink of this lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. As a lamb, he was like us who had to be led by our great shepherd to still waters and green pastures. And the meat and drink that we are told to feed upon is his flesh and his blood, folks. Sheep being led to feed upon the lamb. It represents us identifying with Christ's death. And there's another biblical picture of a lamb, amen? Whose blood and flesh are identified with the people. The Exodus story shows the blood of the lamb around their doorways. At the place of their addresses. Where the people lived. Amen. Having lamb's blood put on the doors of the Hebrews. Homes signifies that our lives, the places where each of us live, are so identified with the lamb's death. Amen. He meets you where you live, folks. Where you really are in life, folks. No matter what problem that you exist on. And the flesh of the lamb was eaten in those houses with nothing left over. They had to eat it all. They had to eat it all. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Exodus chapter 12, verses 8 to 10. And they shall eat the flesh in the night. Roast with fire and unleavened bread. And with bitter herbs that they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with, but with water. But roast it with fire, his head with his legs, and the and the puritans thereof, and the puritans thereof, amen. And ye shall eat, let nothing of it remain until morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. That is Exodus 12, 8 to 10, folks. As a lamb, folks, Christ was slain in sacrifice as ourselves. As ourselves. And the food and the drink is the flesh and the blood of the lamb. Back in Psalms chapter 22, verse 26. Back in Psalms chapter 22, verse 26. I pray that everyone is following along. I pray that everyone is following along with me as we are, um, as we're really deep in the word of God today and uh, with plenty of reference to share with you. Amen. I pray that you are uh, writing down these memos, or if not, you're highlighting it on the script. If you copied and pasted and, and you downloaded the script for today to follow along in the sermon. Amen, because there is a lot to cover today. And I pray that many of you 
will go back. And I pray that many of you will receive of this word again until the Holy Spirit really overfills you. Amen. With his word. Amen. But back in Psalms chapter 22, 26. By now you should be prepared with this. We read of hearts living forever. Psalms 22, 26. Let us read. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seeks him. Your heart shall live forever. This is the eternal life, folks, that Jesus said would be provided in the bread and in the wine of the flesh and the blood. The cross provided us with the bread and the wine of Christ's body and his blood. Literal bread and wine is not the body and the blood of Jesus in communion. They represent the body and the blood. John chapter 6 verse 50. It speaks, this is the bread which cometh down from the heavens. That a man may eat thereof and not die. We're talking about here the bread of heaven provided in the great house of bread. Laid in the feeding thorough or manger. That we may feed and have eternal life. Then we shear of the world remembering in Psalms chapter 22, 27. Psalms chapter 22, 27, all the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. Eating and being satisfied is connected with the world remembering folks because we eat the bread and wine and are satisfied to find strength in our Christian lives as we eat upon the bread and the wine we are satisfied to find the strength in our Christian lives and we do so in remembrance of whose death of our Savior's death. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 24 to 25. 1 Corinthians chapter 24. I mean 1 Corinthians excuse me. Uh, 11. Chapter 24 to 25. When we. When he. Had given thanks. He break it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do this ye, as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. The eating of the bread and the drinking of the wine is done in remembrance of Christ's death. As our death, folks, as our death. How amazing is that? Remembering this truth is what is so crucial to our lives. That's why I am repeating it in today's message. Because it is very crucial in our Christian lives. All the world will remember the Lord's death. This alone is the key to being satisfied. Amen. As the lambs, we come to the stall and the manger, the feeding crib. And we identify with another spotless lamb. One like us who died our death. Amen. When Jesus was crucified. God was crucifying our old life. Amen. God was destroying my body of sin. So that I might not serve sin anymore. We come to the house of bread. The place 
where Christ came into the world from heaven, the true manna from his birth, folks, having been laid in a feeding thorough to the last day before his death, when he gave them bread and wine and told them it was his body and it was his blood, he indicated that he was the bread of life for the world. May the Lord richly bless you today around the globe. I am Senior Pastora of Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International, bringing you the message around the globe. Let us, oh, we are so praising your name as we prepare ourselves today after today's message and align all of the scriptures that you were fed today inside your Bibles and